maybe Jalen Hurts did sit back and learn something from that and understands, okay, I got to, I got to, you know, I got to pick it up when it comes to that aspect of his, of my game. And we'll see if it continues, but he was great, man. He was great. Now that, you know, he played his worst game against the Giants. This was arguably his best game. That's- Glorious Wednesday here on Birds 365 with your Mac and Mac guys. A well-rested Jody McDonald. All right, I'm rubbing salt in the wounds here a little bit. <laughs> a hard-working John McMullen, who is down at Lincoln Financial Field till after 1 a.m. Oh, I was in bed by 12-something, 12-10, 12-15, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, so, Johnny Mac, appreciate you getting up this morning. Come on, it's got to be at least a little pep in your step with the way the Eagles played last night. Uh, no, man, there is no pep in the step, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm I'm manufacturing the energy, as they say. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a little bit tired of uh, COVID football, as I like to call it, That's over true. the last two days, really. Um, so hopefully we get back to some normalcy from an NFL standpoint. Um, obviously not from a societal standpoint. That's not going to happen anytime soon. But, look, the Eagles uh, took care of business. They had a sloppy start, which I don't think is all that surprising. I thought we said that was a possibility yesterday. I mean, hadn't played a football game in 16 days. The quarterback hadn't played in another week on top of that, so 23 days. And they were sloppy. And if they weren't sloppy, it would have been really – uh, a blowout from the standpoint of of they they just handled their business, man, and they probably did the best job of the teams facing the the COVID issued teams because we mentioned Las Vegas struggled with Cleveland, um, Minnesota struggled with Chicago. I didn't get to see the Rams and the Seahawks, but it seemed like there was um, much of a struggle. So maybe you would argue them as well, the Rams, Um, you know, but they were close for a while and they typically shouldn't be against that team. Um, Eagles dominated this game. I mean, the, the, the offensive production other than points which they got to 27, which is fine. But, you know, when you look at 500-plus yards, and, oh, by the way, 238 yards rushing um, should have been more points. Other than that, though, pretty good. I'm sure people will nitpick about the defense, but um, NFL, 237 yards, you know, it doesn't – you don't do much better than that in the modern NFL. So, I don't know. What were your nitpicks, Jody? Seven straight games of over 175 yards hasn't happened since the 85 Bears says enough <laughs> that this team is a phenomenal rushing team right now with the offensive line who, oh, by the way, let's not forget, don't have Brandon Brooks, don't have Isaac Samalu last night, didn't have Landon Dickerson. So, they're down their top three guards and four. Just Jack in. Driscoll, four. Okay. They were put, down to five and six. Put Driscoll into the mix, and you just plug and play, and they rush for over 200 yards. That's how good their offensive line is. That's how good a job Stoutland has done with this group. But I want to focus in on the quarterback this morning because, yeah, I'm like you, like everybody else. We're all on Twitter, and we follow who we follow. And there were some people that were ready to put Gardner Minshew in that game last night. When Jalen Hurts throws the pick, which, oh, by the way, are, are you even fault. going to blame for I mean, one little yeah. iota that that pick on Jalen Hurts? He couldn't have put the ball in a better spot for Dallas Goddard, who drops it, watches it go off his heel, pop up in the air, and it ends up as a pick. I know it goes down on Jalen Hurts' record as an INT, but that wasn't his fault a little bit. The fumble was a bad play, and he got reamed out on the sidelines by Nick Sirianni because he didn't put the ball away, and he should have. If he's shaken off Russ, well, that's on him. He's got to be ready to play the football game. But after that, the guy was stone-cold dominant. 
He threw for almost 300 yards. Do you know how hard it is to throw for 300 yards when your team is rushing for over 200? That just doesn't happen in the NFL. You don't put up 500 yards in a game. And he was the quarterback of the team that put up 500 games. He throws for 77% on his completion rate. 77. That's phenomenal. His quarterback rating was over 100. His yards per attempt which is the way they measure quarterbacks. It's not yards per throw, it's yards per attempt. His yards per attempt, 11 and change, 11.4. Johnny Mack, this week, NFL, who's got the best yards per attempt in the NFL? Jalen Hurts, numero uno. Only two quarterbacks in the league threw for more yards than he did. Jimmy G by about two or three yards, and Mahomes who went for 400 because he's Patrick Mahomes. Other than that, he out had more yardage than anybody else in the National Football League. You add in two more rushing touchdowns, which gave him 10 for the year, which is the Eagles' now all-time record for most ever by a quarterback in a season. Yeah, this was the QB. You know I talked about it since, shoot, whatever, last Monday. So th- what if the hypothetical question of if they got off to a slow start, you got the halftime, what does Sirianni do? Well, he took that out of the mix. After falling behind 10 to nothing, getting him to 10 to 10 by half, the conversation was over and done with. He came out in the second half and put the game away. Yeah, I know that Miles Sanders had a career day, and he was great. And Jordan Howard comes Everybody back. He had a career day. Dallas Goddard had a career day. Miles Sanders had a career day. And Dallas had the two drops. Imagine if he didn't have the two drops. Yeah. What kind of day he would have had. Um yeah, I mean, they dominated from an offensive perspective. Anytime you get 519 yards, that's going to be the story. And they did it. You know, the most impressive part about Jalen Hurts, and you're right. I mean, look, I'm not a stat guy. We all know I'm not a stat guy. I try to point out the context all the time. That interception is a perfect example. Now, that's on his record forever. People are going to forget about it. People forgot about it two seconds after. As you said, they're talking about benching him. That's not his fault. That's not remotely his fault. And it it gets lost in the wash and everybody. But the most impressive thing about Jalen Hurts to me last night, Jody, not the numbers as you pointed out, he got other people involved. For the first time since they made this shift to be this running team, which we'll talk about plenty as well because that is just unbelievable. You mentioned the 1985 Bears well, when you think about the 85 Bears in their rushing game, what's the first thing you think about, Jody? Walter Payton. One of the greatest running backs who ever lived. Uh, arguably, you could put him number one. And, you know, most people would say Jim Brown, but they're not going to. He belongs in the conversation. One of the greatest running backs who ever lived. They're doing this with a, a committee. And a, a guy they bring up from the practice squad at the beginning of it, Jordan Howard. I mean, what they're doing in the running game is amazing. But Jalen Rager gets involved. We talk about your guy, Greg Ward. I saw the excitement for for not only Greg Ward, but Jody McDonald and Paul Domowicz. And he's finally involved and he's finally and he gets the touchdown to essentially seal the game. Quez Watkins gets involved. Just little things. Jack Stoll gets a reception, gets, you know, banged up on it. But getting other people besides Dallas Goddard and Devontae Smith involved, it had been for weeks and weeks and weeks when Jalen Hurts was out there. This, when you did throw the ball, it was going to be to those two guys or you weren't going to have any effectiveness. And maybe a rewind back to – the Jets game and you see what Gardner Minshew did and you see his ability to get other people involved. And maybe Jalen Hurts did sit back and learn something from that and understands, okay, I got to, I got to, you know, I got to pick it up when it comes to that aspect of his, of my game. And we'll see if it continues, but he was great, man. He was great. That, That, you know, he played his worst game against the Giants. This was, Arguably his best game. Best game, yeah, I agree. Uh, he put up great numbers. He put up great feel. And oh, by the way, I do want to uh, follow up on your uh, Greg Ward point. Uh, not only did he get the game salt away touchdown in that drive, you're right about uh, Rager. 
Stoll had a catch. Watkins had a catch. Rager had a very good catch and run after to get him in position to be able to get the touchdown. The Ward grab, because, uh, you know, I got ticked off a couple weeks ago against the Oh, Greg Ward dropped that touchdown pass. He was fully extended in the air, was off his fingertips. It was a really tough play to make, and ooh, it was a drop. I don't know about that. He did more drop one in the end zone last night in the first half. But the touchdown grab was phenomenal. So you're right. He spread it around. No Goddard, no Smith on the game-winning touchdown uh, drive, which Greg, Gregor's got to get credit for. And the thing about Greg Ward, the touchdown was great. And uh, Lane Johnson picking him up and lifting him to high heaven up toward the what mm-hmm. used to be the 700 level of the bet was phenomenal. Did you see the celebration after he got his catch in the first half down the sidelines? Half of the team came over to, like, give him a high five or hug him because he made a nice catch and run down the sidelines where he stepped out of bounds. He got nine yards on the play. It wasn't (laughs) a game-changing play. It was a good play. It was a nice play. Kept the ball moving. But, you know, like 11 teammates came over to congratulate him on the catch. That's how much they appreciate this kid, Greg Ward. Why he hasn't been part of the offense over the last – Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever link you want to go back, still boggles my mind. I think Sirianni gets a ton of credit for putting this game plan together. Stoutland gets a lot of credit. Credit goes all around with the Eagles and their offense last night, but I'll still wonder why Greg Ward somehow got in somebody's doghouse and hasn't been a contributor when he can help this football team win. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, they obviously they want to get and and maybe you see the manifestation of that and you know Jalen Rager maybe at some point the the light bulb goes off and you know you saw on the 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 wide receiver screen play that set up the touchdown you know he's going north south instead of you know false step and and the minute you take a false step in the NFL you're done basically I mean if you're going east west and you're trying to get up the field on that type of play um and there was too much hesitation and you know they took the kick return uh part of it away from them and gave it to Kenny Gainwell and and gave him a step back from that standpoint I don't know you get him some confidence and and maybe it, it manifests into something uh, with his speed and his explosion and that type of thing. And then you have Quez Watkins and his obvious speed, and they want more speed on the field. And they've said that. Doug Peterson said that. Nick Sirianni said that. But, you know, it's nice to have speed on the field, but you need efficiency as well with that speed. And 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 hopefully uh, they took the first step to getting that with Jalen Rager, and maybe he becomes a contributor down the stretch of the season. It would make things a lot easier for that offense as a whole. Uh, but, yeah, not many complaints. I mean, 519 yards, you'll take that every single week. Uh, you could throw it at will. You could pass it at will. Again, perfect example. Miles Sanders, career high in rushing. He missed it by two, his career high. Uh, against the Jets pre-buy. So all of a sudden, Miles is is consistently putting up numbers. Uh, Dallas Goddard, career-high receiving yards after setting his career-high receiving yards against the Jets. So again, back-to-back games. Um, Pretty good. Pretty good. And and if Dallas didn't have the two drops, you know, He's he's caught he had seven receptions for 135 yards and nine targets. He would have been nine of nine went out to two drops. And Jalen Hurts would have been twenty-two of twenty-six. <laughs> Which he had a seventy-seven percent, I think, is just one tick off his best ever the NFL. He would have had it if uh, Dallas had been able to hold on to those two balls and oh by the way, wipe the INT off the slate, which would have helped greatly as well. All right, you asked me about my nitpicking. All right, here comes the nitpicking. The Eagles' defensive line up the middle was dominant last night. Both Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave were in uh, Greg Gilbert's face all night long. He actually didn't play that badly, if you ask me, for a guy who's been on the team like 20 minutes to go in. He stuck in there and and threw in the face of uh, a pretty good pressure on almost every single pass that he had. 
But the Eagles got tremendous pressure up the middle from those two guys. Fletch had a big game. Hargrave was great. Where were the Eagle defensive ends? Because I watched, <laughs> went back and watched it afterwards. And uh, not only was Fletcher Cox being doubled, Hargrave was being doubled. They were doubling both of the defensive tackles, and they were still getting there to Gilbert. That's how good they played, which means both of the defensive ends had to be single cover, had to be single block. They never got the, the doubled. Was Josh Sweat there at the game last night? I'm not sure because yeah. I didn't see him. Montez make a play. got the better of the Sweat battle. Yeah, uh, not, not even, not even close. Yeah, and and Derek Barnett got a tackle because he fell on a guy who fell down. And he got one nice play where he made Gilbert throw the ball. He clipped his heel, and he got him to throw it out to the sidelines on a play that they lost two yards anyway. But that was it. Where was their defensive end? That's the way you're supposed to get to the quarterback is uh, from outside pressure. The defensive uh, front, the two middle guys are supposed to collapse the pocket, make the quarterback yeah. move into the defensive end. They did none of that last night. If the two tackles hadn't had their game, Gilbert could have had an even bigger game than he did. Kudos to Fletcher and to Hargrave, but where the hell were the defensive ends? Yeah, Fletcher was tremendous, especially. Um, that was probably his best game of the season. Um, as far as dominating the game, sort of like, I don't want to say the old Fletcher Cox, but what people expect uh, from Fletcher Cox. Um, yeah, I agree with you. The defensive ends didn't uh, produce, and that's where you hear I mean, you hear it every week. You know, why aren't they blitzing? Why aren't they blitzing? But, you know, you should be able to uh, get home. And, again, I go back to Chicago the night before. If you can get home with four and cover, especially with with some issues, you can do a lot of things. And that was obviously their plan because uh, Washington was uh, affected on the offensive line as well. I, I will say they were, you know, down Brandon Sheriff's, who the, their best offensive lineman, interior, down to their third or fourth center, interior. So that might explain somewhat why Fletcher and, and, and Javon – had such a big game. Um, yeah, but the defensive ends didn't uh, produce as you would hope if you're paying that much attention. And that's why also why Washington double teamed so much because they knew they were down, um, you know, their best player and they had to help the young guys. But I look at it from the other standpoint. And again, oh, the Eagles are down to their fifth and sixth offensive guards. And they find a way to obviously run block, but then pass protect as well uh, for the most part. They had some issues. Jonathan Allen obviously um, got Sua a couple times on the pass rush um, and Montez Sweat. And that was really – that that fumble was Jalen Hurts' problem, and that's why I heard such an earful from Nick Sirianni coming off the field. Um but yeah, I agree with you. If you want to, they they certainly weren't uh, making splash plays out there, and they needed to to get more pressure on on Garrett Gilbert. And the one thing I would say about Garrett Gilbert is he hung in there, man. He 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 would stay in the pocket and he would take it. Quarterbacks in the NFL tend to be really tough, but he he did not uh, waver when the pass rush did get there. Uh, but he just you know. He doesn't have the talent, and he's certainly not even in the system long enough to do much. And the Eagles played it safe and took advantage of that. And I'll give Garrett Gilbert credit for toughness. Yeah, a couple of times he got rid of the ball, and you could see the hit that he was taking there after. Uh, good for him. It, it couldn't have worked out better from an Eagles perspective. Uh, they get a much-needed win, as we said yesterday here on the show. You probably couldn't call it a must-win but it was damn close to it, and I got it. And there were a couple of things that could have been better. There were a couple of things that were outstanding, and we are now just four days away from a giant team coming here to town who do not look like they can beat anybody. But they didn't look like they could beat anybody <laughs> to win three weeks ago when they did beat yeah, the Eagles. But they even look less uh, likely to beat anybody at this point. Uh, so all the hand-wringing, Jody. Oh, we were getting screwed. 
blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that went right come out on. the window. Yeah, come on. This is, you know, you never want to play on a short week because it's the NFL. You don't want to do it from a physical standpoint. You don't want to do it from a preparation standpoint. But, man, you're in the middle of a playoff race and, you know, how many games has Miami won in a row, Jody? Uh, they were one and seven, and then that, and they are now seven and seven, so six in a row. Six in a row. New Orleans has got to deal with a team that has won six in a row and is red hot. Um, I believe I know the Vikings play the. I think the Rams are first, uh, and then they play the Packers. So they got to deal with Cooper Cup, and people are talking about him like an MVP candidate. And you get. Garrett Gilbert and either Mike Glennon or Jake Fromm in a five-day span, and you're wringing your hands? Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Enjoy it. Very true. And, oh, by the way, uh, even if you have to face Taylor Heineke in uh, uh, 10 days from now, guess what? He's still Taylor Heineke. Yeah. <laughs> It's not like a Hall of Famer is coming back off the COVID list to take over the quarterbacking duties for the uh, Washington football team. All right, uh, Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. Appreciate your tuning in. If you like the Eagles win last night, you can like us too. Hit that like mm -hmm. button, <laughs> like, follow, share. Do it all with us here on Birds 365. That's what Jeff Kerr will do. He's coming up next on Birds 365.